all right, love? Yes, Mrs. Harvey, I'm all right, thank you. Oh, you're a poor thing. I don't feel like a poor thing. You do, you know. to sing about. Huh? Oh, sorry. Still in mourning for your wretched license, are we? Yeah. Well, get my hands on the border trade bastard that took it away. Somebody will be in mourning. Oh, you'll get it back. It's only a matter of time. Unless, of course, they find out that you're still flying. Yeah, meanwhile, I'll have to pay for another pilot who flies like he's driving a three-ton truck. <laughs> you hired Starmer. Yeah, he was cheap. I couldn't afford to be choosy. Full flap. Travelling. Set. Hope you don't get too used to that. Huh? I'm sitting in my seat. I don't want you disappointed when I take it back. <laughs> no, sir. Huh? And you said it'd fix it. Oh, I'll have to stay noisy. Here, yeah, what time are they coming to pick this load up? Ah, oh, no hurry this afternoon. Uh-huh. Good trip. <laughs> yeah, passengers fairly well behaved. <laughs> oh! Jen phoned a couple of times this morning. Wanted to know when you got back. I'm not having it, Jen. I'm not having you stuck in this room day after day, white as a sheet, with no proper food. Get all my rations. No fresh air. Sit out. Oh, with the damp washing, I know. What's all this about no clinic? Oh, don't make a fuss, Mum. Having a baby's a natural thing. I'd rather have it in a field than in one of them places. Oh, that's what you're saying now. I can't go back. I can't go crawling back to Dad, making him think he's won. <sighs> It's not a battle, Jen. Oh, Jack likes to think it is. He should be decorating the baby's room at a time like this and making sure you had a wedding ring on your hand. Mum, you don't understand. It's me won't marry him. Have neither of you a scrap of feeling for that poor little mite you're carrying? Come on, let's get moving. You wouldn't have been the pilot, of course, because you don't have a license. No, that would be too risky, even for you. Border trade car me up, I do as I'm told. <laughs> I want my license back. I survey aircraft. I've nothing to do with airmen. And you're a book passer like the rest of them. You're friends of the Ministry, haven't you? I'm a better pilot than most of their licensing. How about it? There's nothing I can do, Jack. When they hand out medals for red tape merchants, you'll be right up front. You knew they had it in for me. Now, that's not fair. Oh, no. Well, you could try Donald Woolcott, I suppose. He's almost your local MP. What, the hanger and flogger? I thought you'd approve. Don't be stupid. Made a speech in the Commons supporting you bandits against the nationalised airlines. Oh, what? Hmm. Said the nationalised flag carriers were Leviathan the Whale. Give me minnows every time, he said. Private enterprise, small, fast and flexible. Didn't you read it? I'm too busy flying to read the newspapers. Donald Woolcott. Jack, if you do see him, play it straight. Such a new pilot. Yeah, you'll like him. Just your sort, flight, like Lieutenant Starmer. Clean license, never been grounded. Oh, a new 
You're a bit bloody fast, aren't you, Robin? Better than too slow. Fired. I'm sorry, Jack. Monkeys fly better than that. Nobody prangs my plane. Go on, piss off! Anyone can make a mistake. Not with Kelly watching, they can't. It can be mended, Jack. What you waiting for, your money? I'll post it. I don't know what to say, Jack. Well, don't say anything. Just bugger off! And the sods take my licence. Jack, you can't afford it. What? You can't afford to fire him. Robin! Come on, I didn't mean it. She left, didn't she? Because her mother came and got her. How that poor woman's going to face the neighbours, I don't know. Nice person, I thought. Will you be staying, Mr. Ruskin? I can't lower the rent because there's only one on you, any more than I raised it because there was two. Oh, it's all right. Thank you, Mrs. Harvey. Aren't you going after her, then? I don't understand you, Jen. One breath you say you love him, the next you say you'll be miserable married to him. If you're with Jack Ruskin, you've got to look after yourself. And I don't think I'm strong enough. Oh, that's just the baby making you talk like that. He wants me now because I won't have him, that's all. When he gets what he wants, he moves on to something else. That's his nature. If he loves you, he'll always want you. It's raining. Nil visibility. <laughs> you know, once a rainy day was just wet. Now, I think... Is he flying? Is he safe? Safe, quick, cheap transport. Passengers a speciality. <laughs> well, I'm glad you finally took up my idea. Well, I reckon we can do a bit better than just flying a few businessmen to Bond. You ain't got to start somewhere. I want to start by getting my license back. Hmm. Well, that's easier said than done. Yeah. I want to borrow some money. How much? Oh, come on, you get it back. First passenger trip. I need you to go to London. Well, when? Now. Come on, banks will be closed in half hour. That much? Oh, well, I suppose it's all right. Hey, hmm? that's Jen. Hmm. I haven't seen her. She's gone back to her mother's. <laughs> I can't say that surprises me. What do you mean by that? Mrs. Harvey's. Oh. It's a bloody dumb jack. Yeah, well, that's my business. Come on, they'll be closed. Oh. You mean, yeah. you went to Mrs. Harvey's, found I'd left, and went straight back to the airfield? Didn't even come after me? Well, I think he had a bit of a sleep first. Oh. Well, you see, something came up. 
Always does. Well, it was rather important. Always is. Jen. He's gone to London to try and get his license back. Oh, Peter. Do you think he will? Well, he had that look on his face. Oh, don't <laughs> tell me. That's all the way I see is Ruskin the rough nailed you for being in the rest place. Huh? And it's about the size of it. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous to keep a good pilot out of the air for a technicality. You have to fight the bureaucrats, Ruskin. They're everywhere, all of a sudden. Rashly got to people's heads. They think they need permission to do anything, even raise food to their lips. <laughs> Act first, ask afterwards. That's how we won the war. Pity you had to upset the wrath. But being in their airspace doesn't seem the sort of offence that merits your being grounded. And you're a man after my own heart. The minnow facing up to the leviathan. Hmm? <laughs> Did you read my speech? Oh, admired it very much. <laughs> Tell it speaks well of you. Good man, tell it. Well, I'll see what I can do, Ruskin. No one likes questions in the house. They mean work. That's the one. The only power the common has post war to threaten the civil servant with work. Yes, well, I'm very grateful. Oh, it's not done yet. I said I'd do what I could. Perhaps I could make a donation. Put that away. Oh, to the Rath Benevolent Fund. Put that away at once. wrong with me? You haven't even registered. You have to get your extra rations and your free milk. You have to book in at the hospital. I'm having the baby at home. That's for the doctor to decide. And you get an RB too for the baby. How can a baby that's not even born have a ration book? Oh, I think it's wonderful what they're doing. Cod liver oil, orange juice, everything free. You're a very special person once you're pregnant now, Jen. Wasn't like that in my day. When I was carrying you, I only went out after dark. Why? You didn't want anyone to see you, did you? They'd know what you've been doing. <laughs> oh, my. True. <coughs> Mrs. Shaw. She means me, Mum. And it's Miss Shaw. Any change of address? You're not reporting our Jen. I'm not reporting. I'm letting the moral welfare officer know. It's her business to help unmarried mothers and safeguard the babies. Illegitimacy's been a real problem, hasn't it, since the war? So the officer will make proper arrangements for the confinement and postnatal care. We can do that. But you haven't, have you? Your daughter hasn't even been to the clinic and she's eight months. She hasn't claimed her RB2 and the baby hasn't even got a national registration number. Poor little mite. Numbered before it's even born. But she may want to issue an affiliation order against the father if she knows who it is. Or she may want to have the baby adopted. It's often best. Uh, adopted? Any bleeding? No. You sure? Yes, of course I'm sure. Why did you leave it so long? I'm young, healthy and normal, and I don't make a fuss. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Mum. All the free milk and stuff. It's not free, it's tuppence a pint. And you put me off last time I was here, if you must know. Yes, I do remember you. You were very nervous. All right, uh, give you a certificate to bring your milk ration up to 14 pints a week. Uh, can I get up now? As you like. You are sure it's your first babe? Yes, of course I'm sure. Uh, you'd be amazed what some girls manage to forget, especially if they're not married. I don't see that not being married has anything to do with my medical condition. Oh, well, don't you? Worry and stress, you know, never helped anyone. 
Doctor, if there's anything wrong with me, please say so. Otherwise, just give me my certificate and I'll get down to the food office. Miss Shaw, the specified abnormality is a condition known as placenta previa. It's very rare in first babies, but it's not unheard of. It means the afterbirth is attached at the entrance of the womb and the baby cannot be delivered without medical intervention. Yes, but I feel perfectly all right. It means that bed rest now is essential. There's a real danger of prematurity and the baby must be delivered by caesarean section. See? And I'm not finished yet. I hope it impresses the client. Yeah, Jen's still asleep. Oh, is she? Right, well, I won't disturb her then. I must say, she looks a lot cheerier these days. Must be your cooking. Aye. Anything wrong, Ma? No, not wrong, but uh, she's not very happy with that doctor. Oh, well. Maybe that's it. It's a pity there's no one else. Well, if she wants another doctor, she can have one. We'll go private. Oh, I think Jen would be up here. Right, well, I'll talk to her about it when I get back. Jenna! Oh. Good luck, Jack. Oh. Nobody I know goes private. Nobody you know can afford to. <laughs> Mr. Raskin. Join the new age, it says. Well, I'd like to, but frankly, it's a very expensive new age. My girls are not church mice. I'm sure but... we can come to some arrangement, Lady Comfrey. We may only be minnows to BEA's whale, but we're fast, fair and flexible. Oh, how nicely you put it, Mr. Raskin. If only minnows weren't so easily swallowed up. I've always loved to fly. Since June 1936, when I went up with Alan Cobham's Flying Circus, it's been my positive passion. I knew every single one of the aircraft in the war, Mr. Ruskin, theirs and ours. I worked on an ack ack battery after my husband died, shooting them down. Oh, theirs, not ours. <laughs> Mostly. How many girls, Lady Comfrey, and where exactly are we going? Ah, a party of 20. We're going on a short visit to Switzerland. Well, it's the proper culmination for a young lady's time at a finishing school. Finishing school? Mr. Raskin, we have had eight years of total barbarism. The young ladies of Great Britain need their manners polished, their French improved. They need to experience a little continental flair. Switzerland, at least, is as it was before the war. Whereabouts in Switzerland, Lady Comfrey? It is a quite large place. You're not the kind I thought you would be, Mr. Raskin, to be frank. But then this is the age of the common man. Where in Switzerland? Well, as near the Matterhorn as we can get, of course. <laughs> Airmen used to be heroes, now they are businessmen. But you might be a hero, Mr. Raskin. You can provide two qualified and licensed pilots, a radio operator, a properly maintained and inspected aircraft. Of course. I would like to employ you, Mr. Ruskin. However, there is just the question of the price. Well, I think... I think we could do it for £450. Oh! <laughs> and so I'm sure could be EA, probably for less. 300 would be more attractive. 375. With meals and refreshments, of course. Of course. What about the return trip? Shall we wait and see? Huh? <laughs> oh, come on! Don't sort of bad. I want those seats in Vera today. Oh, <laughs> Hello, Jack. Do. How's your dad? Uh, well. Right. There! Bloody hell, that's 
to carpet, not rags. Well, I said second hand fire damage. I'm not sure when it's down. I won't lie down, walk away more like. What fleet bit was it anyway? It came from the rocks, eh? Rocks. I'm not giving you a fiver for that. Two pounds ten, and if any of my passengers get bitten, you'll hear about it. Right, yeah. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, um, that's fine. So everything's all right? Of course. Why shouldn't it be? You're young and healthy and intelligent and just about to have a beautiful baby. When? Uh, oh, about two weeks, I'd say. The head's nicely engaged. And I don't have to have a caesarean? Well, of course not. Why should you? And I can have the baby at home? Ah, um, better in a hospital. Your first child. Yes, but I don't want to have the baby in a hospital. <laughs> yes, well, my advice is that you do so. Doctor, look, can we agree now? I want to have the baby at home. I'd feel much happier. Oh, very well. My midwife will attend to you. She's a lovely lady. Thank you. Very practical. You call her first, and then she she calls me. I always attend all my births. I look forward to them. It's a wonderful moment when a, a new human being begins its life. After all, I I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, Gwyneth, would you ask Mrs. Connor to come and sure, thank you. Love children in particular are a, a delight to deliver. They they grow up to have better looks, better oh allow me. Thank you, Doctor. And better minds and more energy than conventionally born children. I don't know why that should be so, but it is. It's as though, um, it's as though a fairy godmother attended the birth as well as a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mrs. Connor, Miss Shaw. Hello, hello. My, uh, my receptionist will take the fee on the way out. How can we help you, sir? I want to buy a uniform. I see. Well, I'm afraid we only make up officers' uniforms. I want officers' uniform. Oh, of course. Uh, sorry. Uh, what service? Navy. Oh, we don't get a lot of call, but um, do you have any particular ranking, man? No, as long as it looks good. You know, plenty of ribbon, lots of braid, that sort of thing. How much are they, then? Well, it depends on the material, of course, and how you want it, precisely. Off the peg, I don't want to wait. I wish this sort of thing, and cheap and cheerful. How much is that? Well, we start in the region of eight pounds. You must be joking. I'm sorry, sir. It's not our habit to approach the sale of uniforms after the fashion of a market stall, and we do not sell off the peg. What's this thing? Uh, it was never collected. Oh, well, well, it's not much good to you, then, is it? Tell you what, three quid. Well, I'm not really sure that I can... Take it or leave it. You're not expecting another war, are you? Well, I don't think that's relevant, sir, if I may say Including alterations? I don't think I can... Done? Ah, three pounds. Uh, you do know that it's an offence to impersonate an officer. Don't I worry, I wouldn't be caught dead impersonating a bloody officer. I'll pay a squadron leaders to do that for me. <laughs> Angels one five. Bleeding like that. Frank, go 
call the midwife. Jen started. Oh, this must be a record. Mm -hmm. Doing the flight plan before, not after. <laughs> the IP is. All right. <laughs> well, splendid, Admiral. Do you think it fits? Oh, it's very dashing. Should keep their uh, minds off the carpet. <laughs> oh, Australian Air Force. Ruskin Air Services. Hello, Mr. Shaw. You want to speak to Jack? Uh, hang on. Jack! Yes. It's Mr. Shaw for you. Oops. Uh, tell him I call back. Oh, for God's sake, it'll be about Jen. Well, you'll have to do the spiel. Mm. You've got a nice smart uniform like you. No, but you've got class. You're managing your flying jacket. Oh, thanks you very much. Hello, Dad. She started. Well, that's wonderful, how is she? She'll be all right. They make great dramas out of this sort of thing. Now, look, I'm off to Switzerland. I'll phone you as soon as I get back. She'll be tomorrow. These carry-ons are no place for a man. I feel like a pee on a drum. So long, lad. Goodbye. Who called it the Vera Lynn? Captain Ruskin. Good idea? I quite like one called after me. Oh, well, we might even do that. My name's Jane. Don't say what a nice name it is. So ordinary. I'm thinking of changing it. You must have been in the Air Force, Mr. Whitney. Afraid so. An officer. Mm -hmm. Squadron leader. Oh. <laughs> Come along. This way. Sorry, I'm late, Lady Comfrey. Busy on the phone. Uh -huh. We deal with six planes these days or two. Then you'd better acquire them, Captain Ruskin. <laughs> I must say, it is a smaller outfit than I had thought. Yes, well, as I told you, Lady Comfrey, fast, flexible, and cheap. <laughs> well, the girls can get on as soon as they like. I want to make Switzerland in daylight. Yes, I expect you do. Now, come along, girls. Get aboard. Come on. Come on, now, be cool. <laughs> Some of them look much older than she said. Dangerous thought, that, Jack. <laughs> so, how's Jen? She started. Well, uh, I could always take the left-hand seat with Robin. I wouldn't trust him with a bloody tilly lamp, never mind this lot. <laughs> Jen will be fine. She always is. No, we need the duff sod as a navigator, because her ladyship expects it. He could navigate from here to the runway. Oh, yep, here comes the catering manager. I don't know why I joined this outfit. Wish you know a good job when you see one. <laughs> I wouldn't mind what I saw getting on there. <laughs> That's why we're leaving you behind. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, what will your missus say? Listen, don't forget the barley sugar. <laughs> Little chap's taking his time, that's all. I have a feeling it'll be a boy. <laughs> but, uh... You, uh, you think everything's all right? Oh, perfectly. There really was no need for Mrs. Connor to call me off the golf course. She's quite able to do it on her own. Will fuss. Still, that's not a bad thing in a midwife. And I was winning. <laughs> Aren't you to stay with, Jen? Uh, no. No, I'll, um, I'll drop back in an hour or so to see the bouncing baby. I have other calls. I don't really feel very happy oh, about it. Uh, of course, of course. But when your daughter presents you with a fine, healthy child, the natural course, Mrs. Shaw, that's the way. Baby knows it. So should we. Thank you.
Captain Ruskin. Is the squadron leader flying the plane now? Ah, while well, I'm checking back in. But you're the captain. Yes, I'm the captain. Captain Ruskin, is that gone through? <laughs> Sit down, girls. Sit down. Yes, it is. Geography must have been your strong point. Hey, Robin. Where are we? There. What's that on our right, Dunkirk? Uh, I should think so. Here we are. That's a bit out, isn't it? I should have got one of the girls to do the job. Sorry? We should have had Dunkirk on the left. Oh, sorry. Storms all the way down France, Jack. Well, it shouldn't be a problem. Take it easy, then. Remember, we've got passengers. Keeping the fly log. Well, yes. Where was our last fix? Soison. Soison. Time? 1338. 1338. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Jenny. laughs> I'm not waiting any longer. She's bleeding too much. Shall I call Dr. Lydia? No, call an ambulance. Quiet, Jim. No. Reassure them. I nominate the captain. Thanks. <laughs> Are you going to give out the sandwiches? What? Are you going to give out the sandwiches? <laughs> What's all this? Oh, there's nothing to get upset about. Well, with you all right, Mr. Roskin? It's not that you get used to it. I tell you, do up your belts. You'll feel much more comfortable. Captain Ruskin, mm -hmm. I can't remember how to do it. Well, it's easy. You do like this. But Mr. Ruskin. Mr. Ruskin. Mr. Ruskin. Might I suggest a little more height? What was that? We ought to be flying above the turbulence. Eh? I do think a little more height would help us in the storm. There's no need to go higher, Lady Comfrey. It wouldn't help. Uh, sit down, do your belt. You are the pilot. What's up, man? Ah, so much for your bloody radio. What's wrong with it? Well, it's US. It's an understatement. Last beacon. Uh, Dijon. Time? Uh, 1409. Right, I want a dead reckoning fix. Fly looks OK. OK. It's a safe cruising height. Hey, Dale. We'll hold 9,000 at present. Get us back on the air, Mac. It's quicker than doing it myself. Where 
this calm down of it. in sandwich time, Harry. Oh, come on. Come on, Robin. See if you can do something right. Oh, come on, Jack. And someone better give him a hand. Come on, don't must him. Oh, stay good looking at me. I'm flying. Oh, no, you're not. I am. All right, come on, Robin. Let's get it over with. There you go. Are we out of the storm now, Mr. Whitney? Ah, uh, yes, more or less. You flew us through it. Well... I thought Mr. Ruskin was the captain. Uh, he is. Uh, I'm the... well, I'm the co-pilot. Mr. Whitney? Mr. Whitney, don't you think more height would be a great help even now? Uh, more height? I'm sure it would be. I think I'll go forward and mention it to Mr. Ruskin again. <laughs> Mr. Ruskin! Mr. Ruskin, might I suggest a little more height? I do think a little bit more height would be of a great assistance to you. I'm sorry. Um, we're doing all we can. But I must warn you, she's having a very hard time. Thank you very much. Not at all. Thank, Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. Have a nice time. Thank, Thank you, Captain Ruskin. Will you sign it for me, please? Sure. And we all enjoy the flight so much, despite its ups and downs. I do think my advice about height was worthy of consideration. And the catering does leave a certain amount to be desired. <laughs> Nevertheless, very successful. <laughs> and uh, what about the return flight? Ah, I've decided to take the girls back via Paris. They'll see so much more of Europe by train. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Mr. Ruskin. <laughs> Possible. Eight hour delay call to England. What do you expect, bloody foreigner? I don't even know if it's a girl or a boy. But what about our Jen? Will she be off? Well, she'll be very weak at first, of course. But she'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. I'm sorry we lost the baby. It really was too late. It's all my fault. She should have come straight to hospital. Well, even then, there's no guarantee we could have saved the child. The, um... Afterbirth was in the baby's way, and uh, there were other complications. But shouldn't he have known that, Dr. Lydiot? Takes a good doctor to diagnose a placenta previa. But he's supposed to be the best. He's certainly very successful. I'm sorry, Mrs. Shaw, if you'll excuse me. Oh, any luck, Jack? Refueling complete. Yes, all done. Come on, then. Let's see Switzerland. Have you been somewhere to sleep, Jack? We're not staying. You'll have to forget your cuckoo clocks. We're flying straight back. Empty? Well, I don't want to walk back. 
I was going to find out where those girls were staying. Well, I'm doing you a favour then, aren't I? Oh. See Jack. He'll be here as soon as he can, love. Of course he will. Hasn't he even phoned? Yes. He sent his love. Champagne later. Wonder what you pass. <laughs> Sims, the Gondefa there have been celebrating. No good knocking Jack. Why? Well, at the hospital. She's been there since yesterday, your Jen. Why? I tried Jack. But it was too late for the baby. Where is she? Up the stairs, board three. the trip. Oh, all right. Got to eat quick as a good. I know. Doing straight round. Peter's knackered. Passengers were satisfied then, were they? Should have been here, love. It's all right, Jack. No, I should never have gone away. Do you think what happened was a punishment? Oh. I'll pick myself up. Start again. Eh? Well, then. Can we have another one? I'll do it better next time. Well, you have to be married first. All right. All right.
Airline continues next week at the same time here on Plus. And we'll be back with our very own fashion god, Jason King, at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning.